Hi. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to strengthen a painting and get some clarity on some important decision making that will happen in about two thirds of a way through a painting. So this painting here has paint on all the surface but I would not consider it done. And one of the things that happens to me and might happen to you because it's very common is that when you're engrossed in painting and you're you're going along and you're looking at your reference and you're you're thinking about different things you can lose sight of the whole and so what happened when I took a step back from this painting was I noticed that you know somebody had come along and lined up all my rocks who knew right so I have one two three four five six seven rocks all lined up in a straight line which means it's boring so I want to adjust that and there's also some things that I put down in place in this painting just to get an idea of what's going to go there but it's not done so I have really thin green paint right here um, the clouds aren't right yet clouds aren't right yet um, I, I wanted to make sure that I had the the contrast correct the values correct I want something that's in the foreground to be more contrast which means more lights and darks that are close to each other not all the values all the steps in between and you want more detail so some of that detail I haven't put in I don't go very fine detailed anyway that's just not my personal style choice but um, I'm gonna add some some flowers and things in here so I put a couple of marks of, of other colored paint so I would remember that I was going to do that and get a little bit of that visual effect to work with so that's where I am so let me step out of the frame here so you can see it's a very long painting and with this this length here you want to make sure if you have a painting that's got one side that's longer than the others that your composition is strong enough to hold that up one of my concerns with this that I should have pushed just a little bit farther than I than I already did was that this line here of dark trees is right in the middle and when you chop something in the middle it's really easy for it to become um, boring or it looks wrong we really like things on on um, thirds so if this was here or here we would be automatically okay with it more than if it's being right here part of my idea is that there's kind of another line that's happening right here that isn't accentuated enough part of that reason is because it wasn't in the photograph I was working from and I need to make that correction now to a better painting so when you get to this spot in a painting where you can go, okay, there's paint everywhere, or I pretty much know where I'm going, what else can I do to make it strong? You want to think about composition. You want to think about your, your values. So that's your, your lights and your darks. You want to think about your color hues. Is everything working together? Now, I always teach people to mix paint from just a few different choices and have those choices on your palette in the beginning. Um, I'm not somebody who lays out 40 colors of, of tubes of paint. I don't even own 40 different colors of tubes of paint. Um, I wouldn't be against that. If anybody wants to send me paint, that'd be okay. But I, I, I have, you know, five to seven colors of tubes of paint at any given moment. Um, so I want to I wanna go through and I want to go, okay, what is strong? What do I like? What can use more help? So a uh, few things I want to do here. I want to move these rocks and I want to change these values. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are a little bit further into the painting and so some of the main things that I have done is I reduced the contrast up here between the part and the clouds where you could see it was stormy but there were some highlights um, because the contrast here was too sharp. It kept tugging my eye up there 
but wasn't really rewarding me for that. Um, coming down here, I moved the rock that was up here down right here. And by doing that, it, it creates this up and down. These ones are still kind of lined up, which I might change. I might not, we'll see. But at least by moving this big one here, it, it gives me a different feeling. It, it's not just shooting me straight across the painting. And I'm gonna do a little bit more um, here on this path, because if you didn't notice it before, there's a path right here that this, the, this is the trail that you're hiking on when you're going around Mount Rainier. Um, and then over here, we've added in more texture to all of these areas down here. I'm trying to get my paint brushes out of the way so you can see. Um, so more lights and darks, more different hues of the green, added some of those little flower moments in. I still need to come in with the trees um, in here and finish those off. I mean, I just have like part of a tree right here that, that, that needs to be fixed. Um, but I wanted to show you at this point, okay, here's, here's what we have. Here's what we've improved on. We have more texture. It's more interesting in the front. It was a little boring before. Um, and over here, um, I like this orange, but I feel like the, the intensity on the color is too, too high. I want to dull it down a little bit because this is not the foreground. This is that mid ground area. Um, so it needs to not be kind of leaping forward. And since I have a warmer color further back than my foreground, I really need to make sure I bring that down in intensity or it's gonna try to leapfrog forward and push the other one back and that's not gonna work. And the viewer might not know why they're confused, but they're gonna know that there's something wrong. So I'm gonna help them <laughs> by toning that orange just a little bit closer to gray. And remember, a good way to do that without actually adding black to your palette, which would dull the color out and not make it realistic, if you're doing landscape painting, a good way to bring the intensity down on a color is to mix the opposite of, um, into that hue. So orange, the opposite on the color wheel is blue. And so if you have a very bright, brilliant orange and you want to just knock that intensity down a level, add just a little bit of blue in it and we'll bring it down without shifting the color too far one direction or the other. So that's what I'm gonna do in here. And then this little area, gray patch, is supposed to be a lot of little tiny rocks. So I'm gonna work on making that possible without making it too busy. So that might be an area where I do it a couple of times to get it right. And so later on, we'll get the completed painting done. But I wanted to show you here in this in this video what I did and why I did it. So I hope that helps. Um, let me know in the comments um, if you have a question, if you wanna know why I did something, if something wasn't clear, um, this is made to help you. So let me know how I can help you. All right, um, so thanks so much, bye.